From here, we're gonna plant the rest of our fishing rods and the most difficult part, waiting. If you don't wait, you don't eat. And if you do wait, maybe you still don't eat. The last time I went to Japan, it was not just Kobe steaks and sushi. I hunted down the country's most elusive, aggressive, shark-toothed predator. Oh, what the f <laughs> Now, I'm in Vietnam, taking on an even bigger challenge. This is how evolution began. Today on the Best Ever Food Review Show, me and my little companion will attempt to hunt down one of nature's most fierce creatures, the mudfish. Today, with the help of some skilled locals and my loyal puppy, Bon Me, I'm heading into the wild. Oh, the smell. Aiming to hunt down a vicious prey, a creature who lives in an extreme, unforgiving environment. How any fish could live in this is beyond me. But is it worth it? Could this slimy, mud-dwelling monster actually be delicious? Is it good? I'm about to find out. Let's go. You ready? Do you see a fish? Do you see a fish? All right, let's go. To help me trap these little monsters, I secured the assistance of a local mud fishing specialist, Mr. Kung. I'm about to descend into the mud pit. My man here, he's just walked in, and he's about a, a quarter of a calf deep in that mud. Although, they told me I'll probably go hip deep because of my weight. Ah, yes, Vietnamese culture. Always a subtle way to let you know you're overweight. All right, let's go. This is today's hunting ground. The mud is muddy. Just a one hour drive from the mega city of Saigon. It's very thick. In this very unique ecosystem. Ugh, following you, chief. You can find a grody little guppy like no other. How any fish could live in this is beyond me. Evolution's missing link. This is the mud skipper, a fish that can breathe in water and on land. In fact, they can stay out of water for two days while they hunt down prey. Apparently how this works is you need to kind of march around and then eventually you'll stumble upon a um, pit, a cave, a hole, a reservoir, a place where the fish are gonna hang out. Now, he has a trained eye. So somewhere in here, he sees something that reminds him of fish. Uh, no. Right here, there's kind of a big crater. For some reason, he thinks it's gonna have a fish. From here, he's gonna set up a fishing trap. To catch a special fish, you need a special trap. Luckily, Mr. Kung has the right tools for the job. This is just like a mini fishing pole because these fish aren't very big. It's not gonna be that heavy. So he puts on a piece of shrimp. Somehow these fish know to eat shrimp even though there's no way a shrimp could survive out here. Everybody likes shrimp. And he just puts it on the very edge of this pond. From here, we need to leave this particular spot and then hopefully we've got some fish. And if we don't, we'll just go to the market for backup. In the meantime, we're laying a lot more traps. Let's go. upon our second hole. This one looks like a nice hole. I mean, it's got a nice shape, lots of fun crevices for the fish to probably slide in. This fish burrows holes like these to hide from predators. But while they're hanging out, they can do a little mating too. That's right, this is a love hole. You can even see here is a, a little path that the fish has made. To travel around, the mudskippers use their pectoral fins, leaving a trail behind them. So he's taking out another rod. I think I'm gonna do this one. I'll take the hook and I unhook it. Take a little piece of shrimp, put that on there. So I'm gonna get this part in the mud and gently lay it here. Now I'm curious, this is a small puddle. Why don't you just reach your hands in there and just <coughs> scrape and then hope that you get a fish. So, so glum. These muddy tunnels are actually pretty deep and the mud skipper digs them up by eating the mud, then spitting it out, literally using its mouth like a shovel. <laughs> We're gonna put about 15 more of these rods down. About how many fish do you think we'll catch? Really? Whoa. What do you say? He thinks if we lay down 15, we're gonna get five to seven fish. That's real good. From here, we're gonna plant the rest of our fishing rods. And the most difficult part, waiting. If you don't wait, you don't eat. And if you do wait, maybe you still don't eat. But maybe you do. Guys, so we've been waiting for about 45 minutes. I didn't think it was possible, but it actually works. Oh, wow. The creature looks so interesting. It has these two eyes right at the top of its head. And that means it can stay mostly submerged under the mud, but just pop it up like a periscope. Goom, goom, goom. 
The mudskipper's eyes can move independent of each other, and thanks to evolution, they can see better in the air than in the water. When you just look at those little beady eyes, he seems like he'd be small, but this is a pretty big boy. Wow, look at that. The face almost looks like a frog. Huge head. Maybe this is my spirit animal. Big head, big eyes, and indifferent to its own death. What are you looking at? So this is just one. It's not enough for a meal. So we're going to look around and see if we have any more. Mr. Kung here works primarily in construction, but as a side hustle, he catches and sells these slimy dudes. Restaurants buy him for three and a half bucks a pound. However, today's catch won't be going to a restaurant. Instead, he's going to cook them up the old-fashioned way. We have returned from the hunt, victorious, albeit disheveled, but that's okay. It's all part of the journey. Joining the cooking team, Mr. Kung's son, who goes by the name Dat. Cooking here is about speed and efficiency. Simply impale the mudskipper on a stick and grill it over a fire. Here we have uh, roughly 10 of these mud skippers. They look terrifying. They've got some fangs, man. What do these guys usually eat in the wild? Though innocent looking at first glance, these guys have a wide smile of toothy fangs that can eat anything from insects to fish and even crabs. Oh, the mouth is literally smoking. Look at that. <laughs> this is me when I eat spicy food. So he grabs the head, he grabs the tail. He bends it in half, revealing some very steamy hot meat. The first food review right here. My dog, her name is Bunmi. She cannot lie. She likes it. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. here he's put on some of his home sauce. It contains salt, sugar, chili, and lime. Let's try it out. Mmm, good, yummy. Yeah. The sauce is very powerful. Mm -hmm. Citrusy, it's spicy, super salty, and there's some lemongrass in there. No, 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 no. And there's not lemongrass in there, so I don't taste any of that. The fish alone, it's a white meat, is very delicate, very flaky. The smell is fishy and like murky. It's a mud fish. It tastes like its environment a bit, but when you put it with the sauce, very fresh, it creates a nice balance. All right, he's peeling the skin bag. I think he wants me to eat these little eyes. Okay. 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 He knows how to apply the peer pressure. Uh, I watched a video about peer pressure in eighth grade. When people say, come on, you can say, I'm taking antibiotics. I can't. Oh, I wish I could uh, get drunk or whatever you want me to do. Eat the eyeballs? I can't do it. Come on, eat my eyes. Oh my God, it's like two little gummy eyeballs. But it's not that bad actually, I kind of like it. I gotta say, the mud skipper, it's ugly looking. Some could say uh, terrifying, but if you uh, open your heart and open your mouth at the same time, you might find out you like it a lot. Six up, six up. In order to see the mud skipper reach its highest potential, I'm heading here a countryside restaurant where Miss Bunt, the queen of mudfish, cooks them up like no other. We have just arrived at our next location. They literally have every type of seafood you could imagine. They have, they have four types of seafood you could imagine. But right here, this is what we've come here for. Here they have a bunch of different ways they can cook this local delicacy. We're gonna find out how in a second. First, I gotta catch dinner again. So what you want to do is you want to kind of get up under its armpits, give it a gentle squeeze, and uh, slap! All right, let's try that again. What? This is harder than the actual fishing. Do you have a tiny fishing pole? Okay, I'm told she usually uses a net. Okay, I'm gonna try to net them. That should be easy enough. Let's go. Woohoo! All right, pop them in this bowl. There we go. So we have six right here, big, plump, juicy. So let's head into the kitchen and see how these guys are gonna be cooked. Right now we're in the kitchen with Miss Bung. Uh, Sin Chao Bung. Sin Chao. Here, we have about 20 of these guys and kind of have accepted their fate. So, let's begin. Miss Bun wastes no time jumping into her recipe. She starts by dispatching the mud skippers. And that is done by breaking its neck like Jean-Claude Van Damme. Then removing the inedible bits. Off with the nose, off with the fin, off with the gills. Then the organs. Why don't you eat these organs? All that hanging out in mud seems to affect the flavor of their organs. Kind of like why my liver would taste like Jack Daniels. From here, the skinning. Our first dish is caramelized mud skipper. For this stewed dish, the skin is removed so all the seasonings can penetrate deep into the the meat. So we have two mud skippers right here, ready to be cooked, ready to be seasoned. 
Did you see that? It moved. It was over here, and now it's over here. I'm told it's a very strong fish. It lives a long time, even in the afterlife. Listen, everything's been unplugged. It's not alive, but these are the nerves. It's got a strong nervous system that's still cranking away. It's still trying to get back to its mud hole. Poor little guy. So that is how you dispatch and prepare your fish for caramelized fish. All right, thank you, ma'am. This is great. Yeah, come on, come on in. Yeah. So. Chop the mud skipper and put it into a clay pot. Add chopped scallions, shallots, and onions, fish sauce, salt, MSG, seasoning powder, sugar, pepper, fried garlic, chili flakes, fresh chilies, cooking oil, and caramel sauce. Mix it up, add water, and cook for 20 minutes. Here in front of me, two different preparations, quite different in style. You can see this one, it looks like it could be anything. Any number of fish that have been skinned and chopped into little pieces. But when you look over to here, things change a bit. I was told it was fried. I was hoping the frying would like help kind of hide the insane visual of this fish, but in fact, it's exacerbated it. But can I say, these guys they have great teeth. Look how white these teeth are. The rock couldn't get his teeth this white. Can we look at the rock real quick? Yeah, those are some white teeth. So if I got to choose, I'm gonna start here, a caramelized mud skipper. Let's go for it. Oh, I gotta say, that's real good. Meat tastes clean. You'd never know this was a fish from the mud, but really bold flavors. Sweet, savory, and just this beautiful, thick caramelized sauce on here. I thought this would be complicated to eat because of all the bones, but it turns out the meat has become so soft and tender, it just pops right off. And the best part is uh, it's not moving. So that is dish one. Next, the fried mud skipper. The mud skippers get deep fried until golden brown. When they start to resemble horrifying alien creatures, they're ready to eat. To cut through some of this heavy, oily fish, we have some sweet, succulent tamarind sauce. Let's try it out. Okay. It's pretty good. It's meaty, and it would be cool if there was like a crunch to it. But overall, compared to how terrifying it looks, I like the taste. I gotta say, I've been with these fish from the beginning of the day, so I've seen this whole process. But if you just went to a restaurant and this is all you saw, you would understandably be freaked out. And that's why you can never judge a book by its face. If you go to a bookstore and you look at the book's face and you look at the book's teeth, it would be tempting to judge it. But this book, although it may be hideous and ugly, it's a tasty book. Finally, I'm gonna feed the dog a little bit of fish, and then she can decide if she likes it. All right, Bummy, eat this and act indifferent if you really like it. Wow, you don't get much more indifferent than that. She loves it. This creature, it lives only about two hours from where I live, and I had never seen it before. It's the type of creature that would be easy to go your whole life and pass by, because it's really tough to get to, especially to hunt it. You have to be absolutely dedicated. So for you guys, if you have the chance to go hunting for Mudskipper, I highly suggest it. And you can even be sober, but you don't have to be. Merch alert. This is for all you head-to-tail adventurous eaters. Always down for trying something new. No waste, more taste. Only available to the end of March. Now we've seen like kind of the local, super straightforward, simple countryside preparation. Now we're in a kitchen. They have a lot more facilities. They have things like salt, perhaps a, a pot. It's a lot you can do with that. <gasps> oh. You can see him walking. That's so crazy. It's like somebody in a wartime scenario got their legs blown out and they're just using their arms and they're pulling themselves along the mud. That's what this guy is like, but you know, more like a fish. Oh, aha, this one. This one still has a will to live. That's fine, everything's fine. Can I be straightforward with you guys? We put some other dogs in dog jail so my dog can hang out with me and eat. Worth it, screw those dogs. You're gonna be a star and make me lots of money. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into Vietnam's mud skipper fish. I know I did, except for the actually catching it and going in the mud and like doing stuff, but eating, eating was great. That was the best part for me. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. A oh, peace. All right, I'm gonna find a frog skipper maybe. Dolphin skipper, tuna skipper. There are other animals that skip. Can you eat them? I'm gonna look into this.